Okay, this movie is not quite what I was expecting it to be, and I mean that in the best possible way. In His Shadow. So In His Shadow is a French drama crime movie. And I'm going to give a shout out immediately because I know when you hear it's French and dubbed, it may put some people off. Please don't let it. The actors here, and I'll come on to them, were all great. But moreover, see the dubs in this movie? They were fantastic as well. I feel like watching this movie made me realise why other dubs sometimes aren't so good. Here, they match the emotion of the actors to a T. Damn suck up. You have no shame. The t-shirt's just fine. All right, kids, I'm headed back to the restaurant. I'll you know, none of it felt phoned in. Like, they understood the assignment and they brought their A-game when they recorded the English audio for this movie. Sure, the mouth might not be in sync with what you're hearing, but that doesn't take away from the movie. Very quickly, I kind of forgot it was dubbed and was just watching this, not realising it wasn't syncing anymore. Just had to say that right out the gate. Some people don't like dubs, some people don't mind them. Don't let it put you off. So this movie centres around two half-brothers that are on wildly different trajectories in their life. We open up on Malik. He is the main lead here. He is blind. And what I loved immediately, he is playing a game of Mancala. I love this game. Like this game here, it is weirdly addictive for one that is just beads and troughs. I need to not move it too much. It's a bit loud. But I appreciate it getting a shout out here, so just had to give it another one. So with Malik being blind, he has like almost superhuman hearing. It's not a superhero movie. Um, uh, I don't know. I do this. <laughs> He's definitely got heightened hearing, shall we say. Like, he is sensing shit around the corner. We do get a few flashbacks here in the movie that kind of just set up the tone and set this family up. And Malik wasn't born blind. He got into an accident and he lost his vision after this. We get first person a few times and he's not, like, fully blind. It's just very bloody blurred. It's like looking underwater for the most part. But with that also came his, like, Daredevil level hearing. Like, this guy is on point for it. If you want masterful senses and focus like Daredevil, then you should implement sensory deprivation into your training program. So his big brother Ibrahim, his mum and dad came over to the country and they wanted to set up a new shop. His dad left for a while, came back with a new woman, and that became Malik's mother. That's why they're half-brothers. This is where a lot of the conflict centers from. You know, it turns out that I think they all try to live under one house. Ibrahim's mother was just very grounded and she just wanted to take care of the kids. Whereas Malik's mum, she had a few worries about witch doctors and going on. And that does touch in throughout the rest of this movie. Just briefly, but just know that there's a little bit of a witch doctor element here. But she's a witch! Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, it's not like a main thrust for the movie, but her fear of witches and that kind of aspect of the supernatural, yeah, that's going to come in a little bit later on. Unfortunately, one day, both of these boys, their father passes away. And this is where the movie just really drives into gear. Because Ibrahim now, it feels like the one that needs to step up to the plate, become the father and look after Malik, his mum, and the rest of the family. But he went down the route of crime. So he's just got lots of money, but it's all just dirty money. Whereas Malik does not want that life. Malik wants to live a nice life, a nice, easy, legal life legal being the key word here. You know, we see a lot of Ibrahim in this movie and he is running a gang and this gang is just getting force and getting power with every passing month it looks like because he seems like quite a fucking big deal. He's even running like protection rackets and the little shops have to pay him money. It is like big level gang here. And whilst Malik doesn't necessarily get fucked with because of his brother, his brother still sees him as just a person more than a brother. So if there is going to be a conflict, that bias is out the window and Malik is getting treated like anybody else would. As I said, the voice acting's great, the actors themselves as well, unbelievable. You've got Ibrahim is fantastic at playing this villain. He's the clear antagonist, but what I really did like and you don't see much of, he is a fragile villain. He is insecure about the love that he felt like he didn't get from his father and that Malik got most of it. Given that he turned blind as a kid, of course a lot of the focus went on him. There's not a lot paid to that as a flashback, but you understand that that is exactly why he's insecure. And he does play the big scary villain and trust me he is scary when he wants to be but at the same time you'll then cut to a scene where it's shown him having a bit of a breakdown you know struggling with that fact he needs to be the man he needs to be the one in charge so 
what becomes his insecurity then just becomes more aggression. Although there's a lot going on and it's all about the power for the projects because whilst Malik has stayed out of it, Malik makes friends with somebody who is in like a rival gang. It doesn't quite go toe to toe with Ibrahim but it's quite clear that they're not on the same side. This friend is dating their sister. So there's a quite a clear few connections, a few relationships on the rocks here. And whilst Malik has a brother where he is and a friend where he is, Malik is staying clean of it all. Malik just wants peace at the end of the day. We see him going up to his brother's flat where shit's going down. And Malik has friends with the neighbour. It's just this elderly woman, she's lovable. I can't take this anymore. I, they make things unlivable around here. Look at how they constantly stop the elevator to do their dealing. It'll be fine, Mrs. Dia. And he's there just to overhear in the other room because like I said, superhuman fucking hearing. And it's these small interactions that really set the two characters apart. Whereas Malik just wants the best for everybody, whereas Ibrahim wants nothing but his own power to come up. And Ibrahim starts taking the piss out of Malik in the sense that he starts leaving, you know, money at his house because he doesn't want to get searched at his place. So Malik does not have the backbone to just stand up for himself because let's be honest, Ibrahim treats him like person first, brother second. He is not going to come out of that as the victor. As this movie is escalating and as the power struggles are coming in more and more for Ibrahim, Malik has to step up to the plate. He has to take a stance. And that is exactly what happens here. He's not just going up against his brother. He's going up for the betterment of the projects. Now see all the flats here as well. They look amazing. Like, I know it's just flats and these might be everyday looking for some people watching this. We just get nothing but your boring standard grey, so these look really cool. I would defend them, even if, well... Maybe not in Malik's position. You know, he's blind. He's doing a lot here. Um, I'd sign a petition. And where Ibrahim has the strength and the power, Malik has the intelligence. He has the charisma to get through this. So it's the tried and tested story of someone coming at it from a place of power and someone coming at it from a place of intelligence. It doesn't feel like they're just walking over old ground because of these relationships, because of the consequences that are at play here, and because of the high stakes. You're back in Malik every moment you can. And you feel this man struggle because he doesn't win in every scenario, let's just put it that way. And you feel it, you fucking feel it when he doesn't. And with the title In His Shadow, that really is the setup and premise and all you need to know about this movie. You've got that aspect feeding throughout the entire thing, it feels like. You've got Ibrahim in the shadow of his father, you've got Malik in the shadow of his father and his brother. His dad was a big deal. He ran this shop, he had a great reputation, and he had to keep his son Ibrahim in line. He did it with a heavy fist. He's one of those dads that would slap his kid about just for like a bit of tough loving in his opinion. It clearly didn't fucking work because as soon as he died, Ibrahim just took off. But this movie has layers to it. It's not just a simple case of two half brothers going against each other. It is a movie all about their reputation, living up to what people feel they should and living up to their own expectations. I had a fantastic time here with this movie. So look, with all that being said, Said, where would I be putting in his shadow? Although I touched on it, see if you don't mind dubbing in movies. Change your plans for this movie. It is a fantastic drama crime movie. The crime is the setup to the movie, but the drama is what drives it, if that makes sense. It is a great tale of two brothers in conflict with each other, coming from very different viewpoints. You've got very high stakes as well, and some fantastic acting, both what you're seeing on screen and what you're hearing with a dubbing. This is not one to let slip past you. I'll be honest, I almost did because I didn't recognise any of the actors. And then when I clicked on it, I realised it was French and that makes sense why I don't know any of them. But trust me, change your plans for this one. So look, with all that being said, have you seen In His Shadow? Let me know if we agree or disagree. And if you haven't yet, hit subscribe. It's going to keep you up to date with these movies to add to your watch list, hopefully this one, and you're going to make my day. And with all that now covered, as always, thank you so much for watching.